Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week we are continuing on our door alignment on the Alferrari. All right, so continuing on from last week, um, a couple of things that I have noticed. Uh, Tim came around last night just uh, having a bit of a look and seeing how I'm going. One of the things that we did pick up on, and one of you guys picked up on as well, this um, the, the window gap, there's a little bit too much gap there, so I really need to move this whole rear panel up about five or six mil. Uh, the window is, is, is good width-wise, but it's just not quite right uh, up and down, so there's a bit more adjustment needed to be done there, so that's something I've got to attack. Um, another thing that keeps coming up, uh, I suppose I probably haven't covered it properly, but uh, a lot of people are saying that if I'm putting this engine in, I need to reinforce the chassis. Yes, I will be reinforcing the chassis. I'm going to be going through and doing all of uh, all manner of reinforcements. I'm still researching what needs to be reinforced because it's not worth just adding steel everywhere just to make the car heavy and I need to reinforce where it's necessary on these cars, particularly the weak points. Um, there's a lot of uh, weak points on the front suspension and uh, that will all be addressed. There will be a half cage going in this car. There will not be a full cage going in this car. That's not road legal in Australia. Uh, no matter how well you hide it, it is not legal to have a front cage because of uh, head impact areas. It's, it's just not safe driving a car with a full cage on the road unless you're wearing a helmet. Uh, and you're in a harness where your head's not going to hit the the, um, the cage, it's not a good idea. So um, there will be a lot of chassis reinforcement, but my plan is actually to build the entire body of this car first and get the car basically back looking like an Alpha again. And then I'm going to go through and do all the chassis reinforcement and start working on um, fitting the engine and stuff. And that is going to have to sort of go hand in hand because depends on what I've got to remove to get the engine in there. That will uh, play on what I need to do as far as chassis reinforcement goes. So moving on, one of the things I need to uh, go back to now is now I've got a good B pillar in the car. I really need to start working on this door. The, um, the only real known points on this car I have are up here at the front of the door. So that's my first job today is to uh, start getting back into the front of this door. So bringing you over here, you can see that um, it's probably hard to see, but the, this part of the door is sitting out a little bit too far here and that gap is too big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove one of the shims in here at the top of the door and, uh, uh, and slide the door back in slightly. That will, uh, that will close this gap up, but it will also potentially lift the back of this door a little bit. Now, the gap on the bottom of the door at the moment is actually quite decent all the way along. It's, uh, it's not a bad panel gap, but there's more room to move. I can actually, I can't do it with, uh, with one hand, but this can get pushed in uh, tighter and, and bring this gap up a bit. And also over here, this gap being uh, big or small is not a big issue because I can actually flex this panel. I don't know how well that camera's picking it up. There's a bit of movement there in this panel. So when I actually go to button this all up, that's all uh, flexible enough. So first things first, let's uh, change this gap. And uh, another thing that Tim did bring up is my rubber is a little bit tight in this corner here. So I'm going to take out these screws and I'm gonna reattach the, uh, this track hard up against this sill so that I've got a, a nice amount of uh, rubber there and we can close the door properly. Okay, that is looking much better. When I, when I push this panel in a little bit so I can get a nice, neat panel gap all the way down. And I've also got a nice, neat panel gap all the way along the bottom here. I've had to sort of, uh, just by moving all of these sills and getting everything right, I am really happy. That is a very nice, neat uh, finish. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually uh, put some self-tappers into this lower panel, hold it into place, so then I can move forward and keep uh, working on that rear quarter and keep sort of moving backwards and getting everything lined up nicely. But uh, 
that's some good progress. It doesn't look like I've done anything much, but uh, it has actually, uh, uh, it's just sorting out and just tweaking these little bits and pieces backwards and forwards to get it just right. And now with just a little bit of a bump, it's, it's just nice and smooth. And that closes beautifully. So uh, that is the sill roughly lined in place, the door in place, uh, lined up with the front guard. We're actually making progress. So that is looking much, much better. I've moved this uh, lower panel up a little bit for more and screwed it in here. And it, it, the whole screen is fitting much nicer. All the rubbers are sitting where they really should sit. Um, and also I've moved the boot back to the original spots where it was originally mounted, where I marked it out. And I found when I mounted this panel the first time, I had to actually extend the boot further backwards because it wasn't uh, it wasn't lining up. Now it's actually looking pretty good. It's a little bit tight in this corner here, but it's not too bad. And the uh, the line with this uh, with this panel is actually not too bad like the where the boot and the screen panel meet. That is reasonably good. Just this corner of the boot here um, actually feeling the boot, it feels like this corner has actually been tilted up slightly. It's not sitting flat, so I might actually have to do some modification of the boot itself. Just um, persuade it uh, a little bit to sit where it's supposed to. So we're, we're getting there. So I'm gonna start working now on this quarter panel and just see if I can get this quarter panel sitting where I think it should be sitting. So there's a bit more progress here on this rear quarter panel. So now I've sat it on, I went through and I notched out up uh, on this C pillar, just so that the panel will be able to slide back far enough to get in. And my main focus now is concentrating on this panel gap just right here. Now at the moment it's far too tight, but inside here the uh, it's, it's not uh, tight against the uh, B pillar. So I'm going to try and line it up now and screw it in to the B-pillar to pull it back, open that panel gap up a bit more and just, just trying to get the, uh, the line right. There's complete flexibility in this panel. I can put it basically wherever I want it. So um, at the moment it's sort of a bit low there. Compared to the door, it sits out a little bit proud here and proud all the way up here. But I can adjust all of that, that's all flexible. So it's just now time to do a little bit of finessing to get it to all line up nicely and get nice panel gaps to uh, match what's going on at the front. I am really liking this. This is all a nice, nice, neat panel gap all the way around the door now. Um, there's a few little bits. The only thing I'm sort of seeing with uh, using a straight edge is that this uh, quarter panel sort of curves in towards the door slightly as it comes uh, along these edges and same here. It's only half a millimeter, but it's enough to be like when you run a straight edge on it, it's not perfectly level and flush. So um, it might take a little bit of sort of finessing uh, to get that to sit perfectly flat, but 
The panel gaps are looking good. Everything's lining up nicely. I just want to double check my uh, window here, make sure that I've got the window frame in the right uh, position, but everything is looking really, really neat and tidy. I am really happy with how this is lining up. Very slow and tedious, but um, I think it's worthwhile in the end. All right, so the other side is looking really good now. I'm really happy with how all the panel gaps and everything are shaping up. So it's time to start working on this side now. Everything here is just sitting here. This rear quarter is not lined up at all. This door skin is not actually mounted to the door. So the first thing I need to do is um, loosely mount it to the door. I don't want to firm it up yet, but I want to at least get it so that it's actually sort of hanging on by itself. So I'm gonna partially uh, bend it over and bend it onto the door, door frame. And, uh, and then I can start lining everything up and getting everything just right. Okay, so I've laid my skin down, I've laid my frame, a door frame inside the skin, and you can see that it's just got a bit of an overlap all the way around, and it's all sitting up, and it's pretty simple to fit these door skins, is basically you just tap them over, and uh, you, you can't just sort of try and do it all at once, you need to just very gently work your way all the way along each edge, backwards and forwards, and just gradually creep the whole thing over all the way around. I'm not gonna close it up completely. I'll probably do the bottom and the front edge most of the way so that it can seal against the door seals and I can get a reasonable idea of how it's gonna fit there. And the back edge, I'll leave it so that I can still pop the door out if I need to. Um, I probably won't. I'm not using any sealant right now. I'm just putting it all in there and getting it all uh, reasonably nice and, uh, and, and neat so I can start lining things up. I do have to come back later and repair this door all the way along here. There's some rust spots and things that need to be fixed up, but that can be done later. First step is just to get this all lined up the way they're supposed to. So nice big flat dolly underneath and just start going around and tapping the edges. Okay, so now I have this door on and the skin is actually not too bad. It's, uh, I might have to play with the skin a little bit because there's extra gap in the middle here compared to at the top and at the bottom. So there's something a little bit funky going on with my, uh, my panel gaps there. That can be adjusted. I can just tweak the, uh, the door skin. As I said, the door skin is only sort of temporarily on there and I can, I can play around with that. Um, at this stage, the... Uh, the gap at the bottom is, it's probably a little bit too tight. It needs to be brought down. This, this panel is just sitting here. It needs to be brought down just a little bit, but also um, the door is sitting proud a little bit this way at this stage right here. So I'm going to start putting the quarter on and, and it'll be a matter of trying to finesse the door skin, the lower sill and the quarter panel together to get a nice cohesive uh, match for the whole car. All right, this is really coming together. The, uh, the lines are getting closer. Um, there's a bit of a bow in the bottom of the door and there's a few parts of the door skin that are sort of uh, a bit too tight in places and a bit too loose in others. So um, I'll take you around now and I'll just give you a bit of a look at how it's shaping up. So you need to keep in mind that I don't actually have the door skin on properly. You can see this panel gap here is uh, a little bit too tight. And then up the top here, it gets very tight. That could be all just a matter of moving this panel backwards. So it's not 
too big of an issue here. You can also see here on the front here, I haven't actually uh, folded the skin over on these bits here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around with a, uh, a marker and just mark the edges back to where they need to be brought to. And down here, it's actually a bit broad there, but then it goes back to reasonably good at the bottom, even though this is bad, the repair panel comes to about here, so that's not a big problem. Uh, the, uh, it's, it's sort of a bit wide in the middle and goes back to good and then back to tight. So I'm gonna get the texture, run around the edge to take it back to where I want it, to where it needs to be, and hopefully I can get the panel gaps looking a lot neater and nicer. Okay, this is very, very slow, tedious work. We're getting there as far as the door line goes. This corner of the uh, the door is still sitting out a little bit too far. It's hard to get the uh, the twist just right. So I'm uh, just continuing to tweak on that, but I'm gonna keep moving further rearwards now and, uh, and just wrapping this uh, rear quarter in and matching it in. And uh, we'll see if we can even start looking at getting the rear panel on. Okay, we're actually getting there. We are making some progress slowly. So this side, I'm pretty happy with it now. It's not perfect, it's, but it's a lot better. I've just been tweaking backwards and forwards. It's amazing how much time gets sucked up by just, just trying to fudge things backwards and forwards and move them and try and make things line up. But uh, we're getting there. So now I've got the boot lid sort of trying to line it up with the, uh, the rear quarter panels. This side, uh, this side seems to sit really reasonably nicely, although maybe a little bit high. And this side here sits a little bit low, so it's sort of a matter of tweaking them to get them to sit nicely. But then the added difficulty is obviously trying to somehow attach the rear panel. Now, those of you out there who are paying attention might realize that this is not the original two liter cars rear end this is actually the slightly earlier 1750s rear end which i think looks a bit neater with the smaller lights this the uh, two liter this this car originally came out with bigger rear lights as uh i can as i'm playing around with it i can mix and match with you know the bits that i like and this car is not original uh it can always be changed later and you could just cut these out and make it fit the bigger lights if you really wanted to take this back to standard but that's not me so uh, I got this, this panel, it's another one from Classic Alpha, so now it's time to try and fit it up. The issue is, is that the, uh, the lines are all different and it's going to be a lot more work than just bolting the sides up to get this to sit in place. So now is where the fun really starts. All right, we're just loosely screwed together now. It's not actually lining up. Still gotta do some more adjustment here. So um, I had to throw a couple of screws in here to just hold it in place. And I need to bring this panel back this way a little bit further to make it line up there. But panel gaps are not too bad at this stage. It's a little bit broad at the top, coming down to a little bit narrow at the bottom, like uh, probably hard to see in this camera angle, but uh, it's not too bad. Again, this uh, tail section's gotta come back a little bit but it's really, really coming together. It's actually looking like a car again. So the panel gaps on this side are all really nice. I'm really happy with how that goes. And the back end is all coming together. I said a little bit of movement needed on the, um, on the boot lip. It's a little bit high here, and, uh, but it's, it's nice and even on each corner. Uh, that's all pretty good. Maybe a little bit high there, but that's, that's something that can be tweaked. These panels need a little bit of uh, playing with, and that will come when I start trying to actually join them together. 
This door now is actually looking pretty good. I've actually got the panel gaps looking pretty decent all the way around. A um, little, bit, little bit more just fiddling to get it perfect, but ultimately it is looking pretty good. And there we have it. The Alfa Rari is actually looking more like a real car again. It's actually got some panels on it. I am really excited with how this is coming together. It's like I've said many times in this video already, it's very slow and tedious, but uh, I think the results are gonna be worthwhile. It's worth just taking my time. It probably doesn't make very entertaining videos, but that is just how these projects actually go. This is not uh, some five day TV build, this is real life. And, uh, and I'm not a real car expert builder, I'm just uh, making it up as I go along. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Anyway, that is all I've got time for working on the car this week, so that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 1938 was a time of a lot of experimentation for the Alfa Romeo race program led by Enzo Ferrari. They developed three different race cars to compete in the 3-litre Grand Prix. The Tipo 308, powered by a 3-litre supercharged straight 8, the 312, powered by a 3-litre V12, and the 316, with, as you might have guessed it, powered by a 3-litre V16. Although the 316 was the most powerful at 350 horsepower, it suffered engine problems and was never competitive. The 312, in its first race at the Tripoli Grand Prix, hit a wall, killing its driver, Eugenio Siena. The 308 was the most successful despite having the least power at 295 horsepower, winning Grand Prix in 38 and in 39. It then went on to win a number of Grand Prix after the war in the late 1940s. This also included coming in sixth place at the Indianapolis 500 in 1946. Okay, so it was a while between posting up. This video has taken a little while to come up just because I was uh, flat out doing everything for World Time Attack. Uh, I took the, uh, the Datsun down there, but uh, I'm back on the Alpha now and it's really coming together. The rear end is actually looking like a car again, which is uh, it's slow as I've mentioned, but- uh, well, Is it a good sign and the car looks like a car? It, it is a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, yeah. was, that was a challenging Mrs. Jeff, so um, I'm just going to say thank you for watching. Hope you're enjoying the show. And uh, if you'd like to see the videos a day early, please join us on Patreon. It would really help us out. And follow me on Facebook and Instagram, all at Home Built by Jeff. All right, thanks, <laughs> see you guys. Later. See ya. It was a time of a lot of experimentation. Experimentation for the Alpha Romaro. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a fly go past and it put me off the stride. Supercharged straight eight, three litre. <laughs> Powered by a V litre. <laughs> okay, I've got it, I've got it, okay, let me do it, I've got it. Okay. Anyway, Powered by a straight engine, three litre. <laughs> the deep <-bay> throw. <laughs> didn't say engine in any of the other ones. <laughs> I'm finding it very difficult today. Oh God, mm, why do you put it underneath? V16, but this took 20 takes, mm. so we're going with that.